Hello, I'm here in my basement workshop and I want to show you a project I've been working on over the winter, which is to extend the amount of solar that is on my RV. I have a LTV, Leisure Travel Van, twin bed that's about 25, 24 foot long. And I have currently the top of the uh, RV is covered with 750 watts of solar. After last summer, I decided that wasn't quite enough, so I decided I wanted to add some more. The uh, plan is to add an additional 400 watts of solar panels. And the way to do that, since I've already covered the entire roof, is to go and add a basically stacking panels on top of each other so that uh, and having a mechanism for them to slide out from being on top of each other when you're at parked. Okay, here we are up on the roof, and this is the panel arrangement right now. Several of the panels have already been removed as part of my project to add additional panels. But the pan sliding panels are going to be basically the panels that are out on the outer edge. So the one right here in front will go, the one that is missing from here will also go, along with this one here and this one here. So first thing I'm gonna to have to do is add an additional hole in the roof, which is always the hardest thing to do, is drilling a hole. But uh, what the spot I've picked is gonna be right in front of where this panel is. And to get there safely, I'm gonna remove that panel first. Okay, here's the hole. That's not going all the way through yet, but it's almost. I think I'm going to go inside and drill from the inside up to finish it off. All right, this is the front inside cabinet, kind of give you a perspective. There's the front of the RV, and you can see the hole. Again, try to get it away from everything, and since I don't know the exact thickness of the walls, so now I'm going to try to do is drill this up through this side just to, to open it up. It might be a little bit easier from this direction. Now have one hole going all the way up and out of the RV. I'm talking about the angled part of the RV. It's going to be right here, right beside the passenger door. And the wires will start up, come in, then drop straight down and now I'll have to go underneath the RV and remove a, a uh, panel that's down underneath there so the wires will come out from the bottom. Okay, here we are now. We're underneath, and this is the panel that I'm talking about right here. It's got six screws that hold it in place, and this is the bottom of that angled area. Remove this. This will allow me room to bring the wires down and out back in this corner where these other wires are coming out. Okay, this is what that area looks like with that panel removed. It's just, uh, actually it was only four screws on mine. Uh, but it, there's a big open area right there. And here's where my cables come down from other, uh, pan from the older panels and other things that I put up there. This is where the original solar controller was located. I removed that and put in a switch that's currently in the off position. This is for the solar panels. This cuts them off altogether. So I'm going to remove this side. There are some hidden screws right there. There's about six of them in around here that allow me to pull this panel out. And when I pull that panel out, that exposes that whole side. This is what you end up with, is a very large open spot right back in here and then you've got access to that vertical shaft uh, location that goes beside the passenger seat all the way down to the floor. Okay, the reason we're gonna be bringing that hole up and through here is because this is the area that where I'm going to install the solar controller. All right, the hole has been drilled, but it's, was not easy. This is mounted on a uh, aluminum plate uh, and the reason for that is to help with the heat dissipation and the place that it's going to go is right 
in here. And what you can see is I've drilled holes and I've used uh, wood inserts that have a quarter 20 uh, machine bolt there. This way, I don't have to have any uh, visible bolts on this side. So I'm gonna be putting that in uh, next. Here are the wires that are gonna be run. These are the solar uh, wires that are gonna go up to the solar panels. This is, uh, I got 30 foot of red and black, just, and this is six AWG. Uh, you pick this specifically because six gauge is the largest gauge that fits into the terminals on the solar controller. And in addition to those two wires, there's gonna be, this is a, a, um, a two wire combination, a 12 gauge, and it's uh, going to be used for providing 12 volt power to the linear actuators that actually move the solar panels in and out. So I'll be running two strand, uh, two separate wires since I'm going to wire the switches up uh, as a left and right side. So I don't have to have both sides go out all the time in case there's an obstruction or some, for whatever reason, I might want to have one side left in. Okay, the first wire pool is complete. Now I'm coming out through here, all four wires, and from here, they're all coming in, and you can see back in there where they're coming out, and this is where they come up from the bottom. So now it's a case of pulling it up through the hole in the top and pulling enough wire out for using up, up on the top. And then we'll go back down and work underneath again. And you can see the wires have all been pulled out and into this area. So it's a very good mess, but probably another day or so and I'll be done. Had to go out and get some additional six gauge wire. I uh, used up all that I had, but now I'm ready to start doing the positive side of the uh, wiring. And so this is the positive bus bar right here. So I'm gonna be wiring from the bus bar over here to the, right here is a 60 amp uh, thermal circuit breaker, uh, blue sky. Now I'll connect that up to here, and then that will then connect up to the MPPT. Uh, also have to run a negative wire from the MPTT to the negative bus terminal, which is down in here. After that's done, then I'll power up the positive bus by taking the right here, which would be the output, this wire right here, put a uh, terminal connection uh, on it and connect it up here and then run a, a separate wire into there. So that will finish the interior wiring. Um, then we'll be ready to start working on the exterior, well, the rooftop wiring. But before I actually do that, I'll also be wiring up the switches that will be controlling the uh, pushing the, action, the uh, panels in and out, and that's what these two wires are for. Here's my version of a sliding panel arrangement. This is the mock-up down in my basement right now uh, to be installed on the RV. This is with the motor engaged, and it starts to roll out, and you can see the second panel underneath panel is starting to be exposed. The two panels will be on separate controllers. Uh, the underside, all the underside hidden panels will be on a single Victron 100-50 controller. And these will go on out. Uh, uses a linear actuator, which is underneath the protective box here, you can see it's sticking out. And it will slide 21 inches out. The width of these panels is uh, just over 20 inches. The reason I chose a 21 inch throw, and these are actually 22 inch marine grade slides. So they're uh, stainless steel, won't rust. And it's a slow movement, but 
it handles it pretty well. This way, anyway, the longer slide is just because I want to make sure that these things are fully exposed and uh, minimize the amount of um, shadowing possible. So this is it fully, exp uh, fully out. Today, I'm going to show how the sliding mechanism is put together uh, along with the actuator. These are completed panels and there's three of them here. This is the front and back on the right side and this is the uh, front on the left side. So I'm going to be doing the rear sliding panel over here. And this is the, you see the sliding mechanism. Again, this is a pretty simple mechanism here. These are marine slides made of stainless steel. These specifically are 22 inches uh, slide length, and that's based on this panel being 20 inches wide. And I want to have enough slide out that one the top panel doesn't shade the bottom panel. To do this, I did a little bit uh, more complex, but it can be done simpler. Basically, cut out some um, aluminum plate, flat plate, measure the thickness of your slide. And what you'll need then is a spacer that thickness to put in between uh, the this side to make up for this. So now I went in ahead and I just bent mine and which <laughs> turned out to be a lot more work. If I were doing it again, I'd probably go with a flat plate, but the easiest way would be with the flat plate. I'm going to need stainless steel hardware and I use lock nuts on everything since uh, this is not going to be typically accessible without removing a panel. So I don't want it to get loose. Once you've got that done, these guys will slide back and forth fairly easily. Uh, this is all on ball bearings, so you can see the little bearings in there. So what we're going to do now is mount the motor. The motor is the linear actuator. Let's look at this. Linear actuator, I'm using pipe clamps, stainless steel pipe clamps. There's already a couple holes drilled in here that you can see how they did it in this. And all I did was have to drill this a little wider so this clamp would fit through it. And you see the same thing on the other side. This makes a very secure connection right there. So coming on this side, I have to drill out this one and these over here.